Hi, this is Marjorie Salson of Vibrant Vocal Power with this edition of Public Speaking Tips and Tricks. And the idea, of course, is to share with you some important things that will help you to become more effective, more calm, and more confident as a public speaker. And I see that somebody has joined us, but I can't see the person's name. Goodness sake. Welcome whoever you are. Anyway, tonight's topic is the top three public speaking fears. And the reason I'm talking about fears is because public speaking happens to be number one on the list of things that people are afraid of. And they are ahead of what I call the disastrous three Ds of death, disease, and divorce. Somehow when people start listing what they're afraid of, public speaking comes up as number one. And it's truly unfortunate because the only way that we can really communicate with people and get our ideas across and accomplish things is, is if we're willing to share what we, what we want to talk, what, you know, what we're thinking about, what we want to talk about. And as I have pointed out before, public speaking, as far as I'm concerned, is any time you talk to somebody other than yourself. So it affects you not only when you're giving speeches, which is what most of us think of as public speaking, it affects when you're chatting with friends uh, or if you're going to a networking event or if you need to pick up the phone and make a business call. All of these things are affected when you're afraid. So why are we so afraid? That's the first question to ask. I mean, it's not like we're generally physically unsafe. Most public speaking places are pretty safe places to be. There's not going to be uh, some kind of a, well, I don't know, maybe a, a bolt of lightning coming through the ceiling to strike us dead as we're trying to open our mouths. We are basically not physically unsafe when we are talking with other people or making a presentation. So it's not that we feel physically unsafe, that we're afraid of our physical safety. What we're feeling basically and what we're, we're afraid of is emotional fears. We feel emotionally unsafe, that we might somehow end up feeling badly about ourselves when we're speaking. And uh, I'm reminded of two stories of defining uh, fears of public speaking. One is Mark Twain, who said that there are only two types of speakers, those who are nervous and those who are liars. And the other is uh, a very uh, wonderful YouTube video uh, from uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, where he talks about uh, public speaking uh, being a bigger fear than death. And he goes on to point out that means that the funeral, more people uh, would rather be the body in the box than the person delivering the eulogy, which I think is a little bit of an exaggeration, which was, is what makes it funny. But what are these top three fears that, that, that I've been mentioning? And they are basically the fear of criticism, the fear of rejection, and the fear of failure. And all of these fears go back to our very earliest days because we all experienced those as young children growing up and we had no capacity for dealing with them. And so when we feel criticized or rejected or we fail today, and an emotional of it really takes us back to those days when we had no capacity for dealing with those types of events. So I'd like to share with you a couple of thoughts about each of those. I go into them in much greater depth in my uh, online course, Always Know What to Say, Communicate with Clarity and Confidence. But for this video, I want to keep it short. Uh, I'm just going to give you a few hints of things that I think you might find hopefully helpful. First of all, to do with criticism. And by the way, the strategies that I, that, uh, the three top strategies for overcoming these fears uh, very much to uh, come into play here. The, the first strategy is your message. And if you know that you have a really good message, that it's carefully crafted and it's designed to attract 
uh, your ideal audience and if the language resonates with them and you know it's a good message and somebody criticizes it, that's even when you kind of, you know, get an emotional hit, that's when you can kind of come into your adult self and do a little assessment. First of all, consider the source. Is it somebody whose opinion you, you respect? Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who go around criticizing and bullying other people. Uh, and so if, if somebody's criticizing you who, who has this reputation and you know this person is just kind of a sniper or a bully, then you can just dismiss it because this person's opinion is not worthwhile. They're just trying to make themselves feel bigger by cutting you down. Heck with that. The other Thing is to look at any criticism from somebody whose opinion you do respect as possibly a suggestion, not a criticism. Now, I myself am under no illusion that I know everything in the world. So if somebody says something that sounds critical, what I try to do and think about it, is there a nugget here? Is there something here I could learn from what this person is saying that will help me to improve my message? So that's the first fear, criticism, and that's the first strategy. The second fear is rejection. And it doesn't feel good when people say no to us. We really, you know, it's so much nicer. You make an offer, people say yes. Oh, I'd love to work with you. Yeah, or, or, you know, I'd love to go to the movies with you. Yes, I'd love to go to that restaurant, not the one I'd originally suggested, whatever. Uh, and really, when you think about rejection, sometimes when people say no to you, it's, it's important, again, to come out of our, you know, wounded childhood self, which is where those wounds all originate, and think and come into our adult self and think, well, this really has nothing to do with me personally. If I'm offering something to somebody and they say no, maybe two things are going on. Maybe they're just not a good fit for whatever I have to offer. I mean, I help people with messaging and public speaking and presenting effectively. And if somebody is already a competent public speaker and feels 100% comfortable with, with their message and how they present it and they don't have any fears that they can't overcome, I mean, they're not a good fit for me. They already know. All, you know, pretty much everything I might be able to help them with. So my, my ideal people are people who, who don't, uh, you know, don't have that level of comfort, who either aren't sure of what they want to say or uh, their presentation skills aren't so good. They, they talk too fast or they lose their train of thought or, you know, or, or they just don't like the way they sound and they don't feel their audience listens. I mean, those are the people, you know, who, are my ideal audience, not people who already are, are competent and comfortable with public speaking. So when somebody says no to you, maybe they're just not somebody who needs what you're offering. Or it may be that it's the wrong time for them. I was speaking to somebody the other day, and he'd love to, to have a conversation with me, but he's he just moved, his wife is pregnant, and he's in the midst of uh, possibly buying out a, com a competitor. And he says, he's a little busy right now. Can we, can we touch base in about three months? And so I wrote back wishing his wife a safe delivery of a healthy baby and that, uh, that they find everything in all the boxes when they unpack and that everything gets put away, put away before the baby gets there and that uh, the deal with the competitor works out well. And I also recommended he get some sleep. Uh, and I made, an, uh, you know, I said I made a note in my uh, my calendar that I'd give him a buzz in a few weeks, a few months, actually. So sometimes it's just the wrong time. And, and it's important to know that. And the third thing that people are afraid of is failure. <laughs> and gee, we, we really hate to fail. And somehow, sometimes criticism and, and rejection feel like failure, too. But Really, our, our society has such a negative view of failure. 
But it's really, if you think about it, it's really something you need to be willing to do whenever you want to accomplish something new. Everything new to, has a learning curve. In fact, there's a book that's called Fail Forward because the only way that you can learn something new is by be willing to do it not well. And let's see. Aha! My friend Katana Abba just, Abba just came on. Welcome, Katana. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. And so, so here we are. We've talked about criticism and uh, knowing that your message is good uh, will help you deflect some of that. We've talked about rejection and, and understanding that sometimes what you're offering is not the right thing for somebody and they're not rejecting you personally. It's just that whatever you're offering is, is not the right thing. And now we've come on to failure. And so what we, what we really need to think about it, about failure, and, and I give a couple of examples of what you really need to think about. I mean, you don't start studying piano and expect to play a Beethoven sonata after the first lesson. And you don't pick up a tennis racket and after a few weeks expect to play center court at Wimbledon. That's interesting. When it comes to learning a, a, a sport or a musical instrument, we do understand that there's a, a process of practice that's needed. But somehow in other areas of our lives, we, we forget that. And so it's really important to know that failure is only failure if you let it stop you. If you learn the lesson of what went wrong, what, first of all, take a look at what went right. And because generally when you fail, it's not 100% failure. There's generally some pieces that are good. And take a look at those first because it's a lot more encouraging to take a look at what went right. And then to ask yourself, well, where can I improve? If you ask yourself, where can I improve? instead of what went wrong, you'll find yourself in, in, in a place where you're much more willing to try again. Because first of all, you figured out some things that you did do well. And by asking where can you improve, it, it gets your mind thinking in terms of new ideas and new possibilities. So focusing on where can, you can improve instead of what went wrong, which is very discouraging, uh, is, is one way to deal with failure. So I mentioned that in addition to the three, strat three fears, criticism, rejection, and failure, there were three strategies. And I already mentioned the message, the importance of having a message that really resonates with your ideal audience. The second strategy is, is how you present it. And if you're presenting it orally, are you doing it with enthusiasm and clarity and, and keeping a vocal variety. You're not standing there and reading the speech from a script and sounding boring, which <laughs> we've all heard people do that. And you know, they, and you're thinking, when will this person ever finish? Because uh, present, the best message can be wrecked by bad presentation. And if, you, if you've seen the same play acted by various actors, <laughs> you know what I mean, because some people will play a certain role and, and it, it's just a transcendent experience. And other people, uh, not so much. So how you present your message really has a tremendous impact on uh, the effectiveness of your message and whether it will be accepted or rejected. And the third strategy is, is just simply getting over the fear of sharing it. I call these three strategies, by the way, what, how, and allow. What's your message? How do you present it? And do you allow yourself to present it? And getting over the fear. Uh, there's a couple of things that I can share with you in, in this brief time we have together. And one is to focus instead of on yourself. Focus on the value and the gift that you are offering to the people with whom you're sharing your message. 
you have something of value to share. And there are people out there who desperately need to hear what you have to say. And, and don't even think for a minute, because there are tons of other people who may do the same type of thing, that your sharing it isn't of value, because there are some people who can only hear that message from you, not from other people. They don't resonate with other people who may do something very similar to what you do. I mean, there are plenty of people out there that help people with public speaking and writing and all that stuff, and I know that. But there are some people who resonate with how I do it. And so those are the people who are my perfect clients. And the people who think, eh, eh, you know, who, for whom I'm not, I'm, I may not be their person, but for, for there are people out there for whom you are their person. So focus on giving the gift of what you have to offer instead of what's going on in your stomach. That's number one. And number two, and I think this is really important, a lot of times when people are afraid of public speaking, they run horror movies in their minds. And they think of every possible catastrophe that could happen. They'll trip, they'll lose their notes, they'll, they'll, you know, their mouth will get too dry. Who knows what people can think of will happen. They run these horror movies and they create, create all these negative scenarios. But if you've done anything uh, with the law of attraction or, or you, you, are, you become what you think about, I think that was, Buddha said something along those lines. When you start running horror movies and, and scaring yourself, I suggest you change the channel and put on a movie where you start visualizing yourself doing a wonderful job. You know, there's actual, there are actually professional basketball players who spend time visualizing throwing free throws that go right in the basket. No rim, all net, and they just keep practicing is visualizing it, not touching a ball. And they actually improve their free throw average, visualizing doing it well. So you can use that, if, you know, if professional basketball players can improve their free throw average by visualizing doing it well, I invite you to think about doing the same when you need to present or if you're going to a networking event or you're going to be in a conversation with somebody, visualize it going well. Now let me see who's joined us. Katana, aha, excited to be here and I'm excited to see you. And Lou Bortoni, my dear friend who is a wonderful video guru, if you ever need video. It's so nice to see you both. So anyway, that is that is my story. Those are the three major fears that people have, criticism, rejection, and failure. And the three strategies are to really have a well-honed, designed message uh, that resonates with your ideal audience, to present effectively so that you get your message across, and to get, uh, get over those fears, allow yourself to share your gifts with other people. So this is Marjorie Salson, and I thank you for joining me. I do want to mention briefly, for those of you who wish to learn more about what I do and perhaps explore whether I might be your person to help you come into your vibrant vocal power, which is the name of my company, I invite you to go to vibrantvocalpower.com. Uh, you can uh, find an opt in there for my 23 page, page ebook, Overcome Your Public Speaking Fears, even if you've struggled with them for years. Uh, so I have a, a complimentary ebook there if you'd like to do that. And for those of you who are watching this uh, right uh, in, in, in the summer, <laughs> uh, I'm running a special summer sale 50% off of my program, Always Know What to Say, Communicate with clarity and confidence. And if you're interested in that program, you can go to the website alwaysknowwhattosay.com. And it may still, if you see it in time, it may still also be listed in the navigation bar on my website under the terms summer sale. 
However, this is fall, winter, or spring. <laughs> that you won't find there. But alwayswhatttosay.com tells you about this program. And uh, if it's not available when you're listening to it, you can sign up to find out the next time I'm offering it. So thank you very much for listening. And I wish you vibrant vocal power. May you come into the full power of your voice and share your gifts freely and beautifully with everybody. There are people out there who desperately need you. So please be sure to share your gifts with the world. Thank you. Bye-bye.